we're like saturated with energy, um, we all have our ways that our body will show that. So for some people, you know, and, and I've been working with a lot of men recently. So just to, you know, men, a lot of times it will come across as anger or all of a sudden feeling much more irritated or some people it's, it's more anxiety based where they're just uncomfortable and hearts racing and stomachs churning. Um, some people go more into like the disconnect and, and depression space where, you know what I mean? It's just kind of tough for them to function. So our bodies are always telling us when there's imbalance. And so I like to, you know, just, just share with people that noticing whatever that imbalance is for us is a huge place to start because this healing journey, not, not to be like, Oh, this is forever, but it's a forever thing. And, and then it is. doesn't have to be, you know, we, I, I think it's a form of conditioning that we're taught that like shadow work is scary and, and all, uh, uh, you know, of course there's some days that are sad or some days that we feel frustrated or whatever, but, but it's a journey that really continues. And so we get to this place of balance and it's not going to be like we, we get to that place of balance and then we like ride out on this white cloud unbothered by anything. Like, right. <laughs> not how right. It so he into the full spectrum of emotions and feelings. So yeah, rage has to happen sometimes. Right grief has to happen sometimes. It's like a beautiful part of who we are. And the more we try to suppress it and pretend like it's not happening or trying to control it, like it'll make itself known. Okay. Well, all right. Well, we already done got started y'all. Um, so yo, 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 thank you so much for tuning in to conversations with Glow radio show where it's just not questions, it is definitely, y'all already know, so say it with me, a conversation. And if you don't know, now you know. Um, Make sure that that conversation is definitely spelled with a K and not a C. And also remember that Conversations with Glow Radio Show is sponsored by Conversations with Glow Podcast. So make sure that you do head over to all the places that you may listen to your podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeart, all those good things and make sure that you subscribe to Conversations with Glow Podcast and don't forget YouTube, okay? Okay. But anyway, enough about me, y'all. Y'all already know we're going to get into this conversation, but before we even do that, I'm going to allow for my guest to introduce herself. And then we're going to get into the conversation. Hi. <laughs> I am Adrian Carsey. Um, in addition to what I do for my profession, I'm a high school classmate of Gloria. Can you yes. Yes. <laughs> That's so weird. I don't feel, I feel like I'm maybe like 25, but no, no. <laughs> That calendar says differently. No, nah, we got to stick with 25. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I am um, a mindfulness meditation instructor, a conscious parenting guide, and energy worker. So um, everything that I do kind of falls under the umbrella of energy, mindfulness, and meditation. Mm, love it. Love it, love it, love it. So being that she just told y'all her occupation what we're going to do is the conversation tonight is going to be about healing so let's talk about healing and first i do want to talk about you adrian when did you first notice that you needed healing so let's see i had to look at the calendar to see what year it was (laughs) (laughs) So about uh, a little over six years ago, um, my dad died of a massive stroke. You'll learn, listen, I'll talk about anything and everything. So <laughs> we'll just go straight into the- Hey, I'm, I'm okay with it. But first, I do want to say I'm, I'm definitely sorry about the loss of your dad. Yeah, I appreciate that. And so 
Um, it was unexpected. It, it was a wild um, kind of eight days after he had a massive stroke and and then he passed away. And two months later, I got pregnant with my son. Um, I never intended to have children. I was very confident that I didn't care to, right? Like the thought of loving something that much always sounded terrifying to me. It never sounded joyful. I'm like, oh, this little tiny thing depends on me forever. And like, I don't. <laughs> right, right. So I um, sometimes kind of joke that my son was conceived off grief and gray goose. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, however they get here, they got here. <laughs> right. And so that just just sent uh, my body on this whirlwind of of grief and joy and confusion and resentment and I mean I, I felt like I was just suffocating up under any emotion that a human being could experience all just at the same time um, I felt extremely disconnected at my son or with my son um, and so probably about I'd say not long before his first birthday, I was, I just knew like something needed to happen. It was, it, it was just time. And so I started, started getting into that. Um, I was just filled with like this, it manifested pretty much as rage. I just felt like this bubbling rage all the time. Um, yeah. And so I, I knew it was time for me. Okay, so you speak on the fact of you basically losing your dad and the, the spiraling that you went through is where you actually noticed where you needed healing. Um, I'm going to ask this to myself. Glo, when did you notice you needed healing? <laughs> um, <laughs> I've noticed that I needed healing. I, I didn't notice. I'm going to say that. Um, I didn't notice that I was actually on a healing journey until um, until I was talking to one of my homegirls that I actually consider a sister. And I was talking to her, and I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I remember the conversation. I was talking to her about my great grandma's grave, and you know, it was some things that I was just like spurring out to you, like boom, boom, boom. And then, like, she gave me her perspective, and I was just like, oh, you know, like, whatever, like, just, like you said, I ain't going to say it was rape, but it was more of me being upset about things that I really could not control. Like, I can't, con I had to realize, like, my best friend always tells me, it was like, there's, like, you can't feel like that you can't control another grown person because we're all our own selves. Like we all have a mind of our own. So you just can't think that you can control um, another grown person. And I was just like, oh, just like aggravated. And my homegirl, which I consider my sister, she, she was just like here. She gave me a number to her homegirl and didn't know her homegirl from a can of paint. And I called, she was like, yeah, she does a prayer call at six o'clock in the morning every morning. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Cause you know, I'm basically already up. And um, the first thing that we do to this day, and this was, you said six years ago for you, for me, it's been exactly five years ago. Um, and when she said that to me, I mean, when, when I first got on a prayer call, she was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna say these affirmations. I don't I didn't know what affirmations was. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to say them not knowing that I had to say them to be, and, and believe what I am saying. And once I had started noticing that, oh, okay, I needed work on my attitude and I started noticing like, okay, it's some things that I definitely do want to change about myself. This is when I decided, okay, well, you get ready to jump on this healing journey. Now here's the thing. I've I've like I do I do chakras and all that stuff or whatever, but I'm more of like when it comes to, to my healing journey, I'm more of I like to journal. I like to write down a whole lot of like how I'm feeling and write down 
um, things that are, you know, goals and things as such. And I also like to read as well, too. Um, in regards with that allows for me to 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 heal on the inside and work on things that I need to work on. Um, but like I said, it was something that I didn't notice until I actually got on the prayer call and they started doing affirmations. Like I said, I didn't even know what affirmations was. And then once I noticed that, okay, once I started believing and trusting these affirmations, I actually started seeing the change within myself. So that's, and like you said, like, it's not a, oh, okay, I'm healed. Let's go ahead and jump off this, this path. It's like a path that you don't want to get off of because you're, you're, it's like more of, you want to see what else can you get out of yourself from the fear that you may have held back in the past because this is, you didn't want to do something because of fear. But now that you have been affirming yourself, you're more confident within yourself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like we were talking about um, before we were, were recording, like it, it literally is a path of, you know, not, it, it's not always circular, but there are cycles of healing and there are waves of grief. And there are, you know, I think a lot of people get discouraged when they're like, you know, they, they dealt with something, right? Like they, they dealt with a grief and then a wave comes, I don't know, two weeks later, a month later, five years later. And you're like, you know, I thought I dealt with that. Like, <laughs> you know, or, or. I reflect all the time, Adrian. Do you not understand? Like I reflect and I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes that, that wave comes back around where we might need to work through some forgiveness for somebody again when we when we had dealt with it and we felt good and, you know what I mean, all that. And then something happens that, that bubbles up and you're like, oh, I, I think I need to, <laughs> I think I need to revisit this again. And so if, if we can show ourselves grace in situations like that and understand that, oh, okay, different things bring up things to be dealt with this time of year is oh, holidays and <laughs> brings up so much that we might need to revisit again every now and then or more often sometimes right 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 i, I feel like that it's only right that you know like it's, it's 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 i think it's only right for you to reflect i don't think that you should be scared to reflect on where you came from um, because it makes you appreciate your life so much more as to where you are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, okay. So being that you did speak to the fact that, you know, you, you work with men and you know, you, you were, um, what is it? Uh, the, you do energy name, name all three again. So mindfulness, meditation, and energy work. Mindfulness. Mm -hmm meditation right. you said yep. and energy right work okay boom okay so being what what made you want to actually start working with other people and actually see other people heal so i feel like that's something that has been around for a lot longer than my understanding of things because you've always been that friend like you know, I was like the hype one, and you, you was just like, you, you were like, you were there, but you wasn't there, but you always had like a calmness to you. Like, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I grew up, uh, my, my dad had a fire, a very unhealed, uh, Scorpio, Italian Scorpio fire. And so I always knew my potential if, if I let myself get to that place. So I think that's where that, that calm nature came from is because I see what happens, you know what I mean? When the, <laughs> when the script mm -hmm. is flipped and I don't ever intend to make anybody feel how I used to feel in certain situations. So, um, your original question went back. What made you want to see other people heal? Yeah, that's right. Um, so I was, it feels like a past life at this point, but I used to be a social worker. 
Um, and so I knew that I wanted to make an impact somehow. Um, I started working for the state of South Carolina and I knew real quick that it was not through <laughs> any government association <laughs> that I was going to be making a difference. Um, and so I, I, that kind of dwindled away. Um, and then once I found energy work and I found mindfulness and I found like all of these things that we can do, most of them we can do at home for free or, you know, we have access to sound healing and frequency medicine for free and, and energy work. Um, one of the energy work, uh, practices that I'm trained in is Reiki. And so that literally only needs your hands. Um, and so explain Reiki, say that again, explain what is Reiki. So Reiki is a form of energy work where a practitioner uses their hands and it's basically, so they are helping your body release and balance energy. So all energy work, frequency medicine, everything like that. Um, a facilitator is helping your body to get back to its natural place of healing and okay. deep relaxation and rest and rest. So basically they're using their hands um, sometimes on, but most of the time above your body to almost like pull out, you know, when heat meets heat, um, it, it kind of creates that, that spiral. And so they're using their hands or um, breath or crystals or sound healing instruments to help your body align back to its, its most healing space. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I knew once I started learning about that, um, it felt like the the puzzle piece that social work wasn't, right? Like now I have this social work foundation, but now I really have the ability to um, to share this with people. And I work with kids often. Man, kids pick this stuff up so much. I don't want to say faster than adults, but <laughs> kids. They do. Let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Yeah. They really do. And we as adults will sit up here and act as if they don't know nothing, but now it's, they know more than what they should know, but I'm sorry, but go ahead. Yeah, no. So, um, yeah, that's how I wanted to get into that. Cause once I saw it in action and once I started understanding what was happening with the body and that literally everything is energy, um, and, and started understanding how our lives can change when we set these different parts of us free that, you know, we, we've kept bound up for different reasons. When we're, when we're suppressing emotions, it literally creates like this binding in our body because we're holding back that all the time, mm -hmm. right? We're mm -hmm. holding our grief. We're in this position where like our body is protected because like, I'm not letting this go. If I, if I open up this floodgate, I'm going to be crying for a week, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Or whatever mm -hmm. it feels like. And so when we're all walking around bound in different ways, um, it's a lot for our bodies to carry. Um, and I've noticed that as well, too. Like, when it comes to your body, you can feel the tension in your body from stress. Oh, absolutely. From, from things that you know that you need to release. And you said that you work with men. Is it hard for men to actually just, like, how long does it, come how long does it take for them to open up to you or are they already ready to open up because you know that they say with society men don't open up because they're scared that you know the the person that they may open up to they're going to use that as leverage against them and things as such so when they come to you are they already open or you gotta you know maneuver your way through for them to, to, to be open or is it, it like half and half? Yeah. It, it really depends on like the person and where they're at and, um, and how kind of they, they come to be right. Like how we, we even start with the conversation of healing that kind of just, it kind of just depends for several of, um, of my guy friends it just kind of happened when kobe bryant died and like my grown man friends were at my house crying and they're like what's wrong with me like i don't even and i'm like no that that's not how emotion works like 
if that's something that deeply hurt you and and what I say like broke you open right mm-hmm. like we can choose to become more open we can choose to drop into meditation we can choose to use plant medicine we can we can choose all these routes to open us up but there are some situations that break us open that you know I call it non-consensual healing <laughs> right <laughs> right you know what I mean it, that that emotion comes out one way or another so it just kind of depends on where men are in, in their journeys and what they feel like they need who do you like working with the most oh don't do that <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tough. It's it's okay. Let me talk my way through this three way tie. <laughs> <laughs> so it is kids in general, um, especially young boys. Um, oh, that's so tough. Young boys. No, I'll, I'll just say kids because that's a way to pick more people, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> kids, uh, moms or custodial parents, um, and men. Yeah, that's that's pretty much everybody, actually. So I didn't. Even yeah, so that. everybody. You like working with everybody. Well, I'm going to break it down this three way time, but I'm going to separate them. I like working with all of them. <laughs> there's, all, there's all different reasons, you know what I mean? Like, right, the, the, right. The depth that each of those, you know what I mean? Each of those groups, the, the changes that can happen when they experience balance and experience joy and experience freedom is you know it, it's just massive that's part of why i i like working with men so much is because oh 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 i didn't say the most <laughs> they have these they have so many more layers of conditioning than mm-hmm. have especially men of color especially especially black men like mm-hmm. they, there are so many more layers of you have to be a man, you have to be hard, be a big boy, don't cry. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean? there's so many layers of that that once like that is that is lifted and men have a safe space, um, the healing that can happen backwards to ancestors and forwards to descendants is just it's a beautiful thing. Before we do head out. I do want to ask you, what brings you joy with mm-hmm. with speaking to people or working with people with their healing journey? I think all of the like weird, <laughs> the weird updates that people give me, right? like, <laughs> like because I I teach sometimes more unique forms of mindfulness. Like I teach using a heavy bag you know, hitting a punching bag or going Mm -hmm. to the ashroom or the batting cages, like mindfulness and meditation doesn't always have to be quiet. The same. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I hear people like, I don't know, message me to say, Hey, my son took his shoes off in the grass today because he was feeling blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, just like seeing my guy friends connect with their kids on a deeper level after they've worked through their own stuff, you know, one thing that people have to understand is when we shut ourselves off to grief or anger or anything like that, we're also closing ourselves off to joy. We can't just choose which emotion we want to be, you know, eh, no thanks, because that that impacts other things too. It does. Mm-hmm. It really does. Well, it is. this has been a interesting conversation adrian like (laughs) seriously i just want to you know just say to the people that are out there listening and here go my spiel y'all know it's it's been a while since i've been giving y'all a spiel and you know it's been other people giving y'all the spiel but here's my spiel on healing do what makes you happy don't allow for other people judgment about what makes you happy hold you back from things that 
you want to experience. It doesn't matter what you want to experience. It's a lot of people out here that doesn't say things out loud because of what they are scared for other people may say, but we can't we can't live our lives like that because we don't know that same person like they say the same person that's pointing a finger at you they got three more pointing back at them so what you think what they're doing probably something worse than what you want to do so don't hold yourself back from wanting to make yourself happy because that's gonna that's that's gonna hurt you even more and with, as you get older you're gonna be with the shoulda coulda woulda mm -hmm. instead of yeah i did this yeah, I did that. So my spiel to you guys tonight is do what makes you happy, police. Yes, okay. I with that inner child. <laughs> I'm telling you, because I'm still will watch cartoons and laugh. I would still like I'm I'm such I'm not gonna say like I'm not a jokester, but I love laughing. Like I am a goofy person. <laughs> Like, that's what I love doing. And so if I find joy in just the little things, like a little monkey looking so cute in the store, that's what brings me joy because this monkey looks so cute, okay? Even if you think the monkey is ugly, but it's cute to me, okay? <laughs> so, y'all, again, that's my spiel. Before we do head out, Adrian, can you please... First, I do want to thank you so, so much for coming through and just giving us a little spiel. Um, we definitely going to have to bring you back so we can talk about some more things um, about you and also your career. But before we do head out, if you could tell the people where they can find you with. Sure. So at Facebook, I have a mindfulness group called Not Your Mama's Mindfulness 2.0. Um, it is a grown folks place to discuss mindfulness. We'll just say it <laughs> like mm -hmm. that. We talk about everything. Um, and so I, I joke with people like show your kids a post, but probably don't let them scroll the page. <laughs> 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 uh, it's that kind of community. Um, my website is life in the moment sc.com. Uh, and yeah, I think those are the two, the two best places. Okay, so y'all, if y'all, if you're out here listening and you don't know where you want to start in regards on your healing journey, don't look for me because now I'm just. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop. But no, go ahead and holler at my homegirl, Adrian. Um, her information will be um in a post as to where you all can actually locate her at. But make sure if you want to know if uh, if you need a healing journey, make sure that you do reach out to her. So therefore, you can have an understanding with what path you want to take. Again, everybody's path is not the same. OK, y'all. OK. But anyway, again, Adrian, I do want to thank you so, so much for coming through and chopping it up with me, your girl Glow. And for those that are out there listening, I do want to thank y'all so, so much for coming through and listening to your girl glow also with adrian it has been a pleasure tonight y'all already know in the meantime between time y'all know where to catch me at peace out